first, it's hard to figure out just where all the people come from. There's so many of them jamming up the gates and ticket windows, waiting, punching, pushing. Sorry, no reservations. Sorry, train sold out. Who are they? Why weren't they around before? Well, a lot of them had a car once, but its tires and gas went overseas. So now it's either grab a bus if possible, or catch a train, or walk. So they ride, if they can get a seat. Or if those same steel rails aren't groaning under the most tremendous volume of freight ever carried in railroad history. Super A number one priority. Down to the ports and to the ships. Anytime. All the time. That should be enough in itself. Uh-uh. There's more. There's the soldier. From that first grim 5 a.m. rendezvous with Uncle Sam at the station, from then on in, he's a headache for the railroads. Every six minutes of the day and night, a new troop train is starting off from somewhere to somewhere. 30 days a month, 12 months a year, the railroads are bumping and shunting millions of servicemen around the 48 states. And to do it, a half of all the country's Pullman cars and a quarter of all the coaches have been given up to GI service. Troop train, furlough, liberty, pass, orders. The biggest job in railroad history is being done despite the fact that several hundred thousand railroad men are in navy blues or ODs fighting. So their women folk have jumped in to fill the gaps and keep up the back-breaking schedules. Some of the railroad old-timers have been a little skeptical of this temporary help. A little worried about a girl's capacity for hard work. But the 100,000 girls filling in have proved the skeptics wrong. They've done the job. Nope, the railroads haven't let down yet, or all the military pressure. They just sit tight and produce. They keep them rolling. The unconditional surrender of Italy was announced on September 8, 1943. The conquest of Sicily in 38 days led quickly to this historic climax. The forces that brought about the surrender were set in motion long before the fact in the harbors of England, when the armies of invasion secretly boarded their transports for the Mediterranean. On the shores of North Africa, GIs from all over the United States, from Georgia, Brooklyn, Oklahoma, were packed into the ships with their equipment. The plan that took Sicily and undermined Italy was outlined by the high command before the keels of some of these invasion barges were laid. General Eisenhower at headquarters in Malta told officers of his command that intelligence estimated enemy strength on Sicily at 350,000 troops. The honor of representing the United States went to the 7th Army. The Armada numbered more than 3,000. Each man knew his exact mission. Customs and traditions of Italy and Sicily were studied. From the time the earliest convoys had begun to form until the day when the full strength armada pointed toward Sicily, Africa based Air Force bombers had been riding through Axis flak to knock out the smaller islands, to drive the enemy back from the Sicilian beachhead and to explode minefields in the waters of the coast so that our landing barges could come in safely. The final Navy barrage opened up after midnight. The first waves landed at three in the morning. English, Canadians, and Americans. Men for whom, up until then, Sicily had never been anything but a name on a map. Some of these soldiers had followed Rommel across Africa and could remember the days when he threatened Egypt. 
Now they were bringing the war back home to the enemy. Canadians took the center of the attack on the southernmost point of the island. English troops landed on their right and moved north up the shore towards Catania. General Terry de la Misa Allen went in with the 1st Division of the American 7th Army. The sea was rough. 60% of the men were seasick. But they hit the beach running. Blood and Guts Patton took off for the beach of Jela from one of the transports to command the units of the 7th Army in person. Ducks and Higgins boats and barges continued day and night to bring in men and pile supplies up along the beach. city and hill and field was fought for. Smashed and burning access equipment mauled by our fire lined every road. As Deputy to General Eisenhower, General Alexander was in tactical command. And Generals Patton and Montgomery were in charge of the 7th and 8th Armies. Two armies, British and American. Their soldiers came from England, Canada, Australia, and the United States. But rolled into one fighting force, they struck with the impact of a single army. After town was shelled, attacked, and taken, with no signs of life but wet wash run up to signify a truce. The people were still hiding in the hills. Signal Corps men kept communications abreast of the advance. Moving ahead, we discovered at every crucial junction and railhead the work that had already been done by our air forces. But Sicily was tough. Tough on the dead. Tough on the wounded who were carried on litters to the rear and flown out to evacuation hospitals in Africa. Evacuation of the wounded by air was developed to a high point in Sicily. The Germans left the Italians holding the bag again, left them defending hopeless positions in surrounded cities. Most of the Italians had hated their partners at war for years. Once the Germans turned their backs, Italians ran on the double for allied prison camps. Their generals, the authors of the Axis Alliance, looked sick. Not all the Germans got away. These are soldiers from the famous 15th Panzer Division, 
the Hermann Goering division that once had the world on the run. These men who won their fame as fighters in a weak Europe wound up behind barbed wire when they met the 7th and 8th armies. On July 25th, when we had taken more than two-thirds of the island, the body blow at Sicily shook the entire Italian peninsula and the rotten structure of fascism collapsed. Mussolini, their duce, the man who led these people into war, had disappeared. Crowds in the street cheered the Allied victory that drove the duce out. It was a great victory for the Allies. And after 21 years of fascism, it was a great victory for the Sicilians. Crowds in the streets slowed us up more than enemy minefields. Some of our soldiers found blood relations, cousins, uncles, and sometimes parents in what had been enemy territory. After 15 years of absence in America, this soldier came home again. Friends and relatives gathered around for a look at the corporal from Brooklyn. The world gets smaller all the time. Germans plundered the cities as they withdrew, and GIs shared their rations with the Sicilians. Thirty-eight days after the landing of Jela, resistance in Sicily ceased. The surrender of Italy was assured. It was a real victory, General Eisenhower said. Our troops have done everything the best troops in the world could have done. General Patton said, pitted against the best the Germans and Italians could offer, you have been unfailingly successful. Your fame shall never die. Each month, the Hit Kit Committee, headed by Fred Waring, picks songs they believe you'll want to sing. Swell folks like Bing Crosby, Jimmy Dorsey, Dinah Shaw, Harry James, and Kate Smith are all on the committee. Here's how Waring's Pennsylvanians helped Fred test numbers for the committee. Here? Boy, here's a smasher. Let's look here at one. Start. In my dreams, there's a vine-covered cottage. Start over, will you, please? In my dreams, there's a vine-covered cottage. My God, where'd that come from? Must have come from a little house behind the cottage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, boys, let's hear it. Mind if I call you Miss Victory, symbol of all I adore. You inspire me to win every battle I'm in. That stinks. Who wrote that? You did. Blow it out. Well, you got anything here, boys? Yeah, G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. G.I. Joe for the G.I. Joe. No, he's just another soldier in the uniform. Cut, cut. I'm afraid G.I. Joe won't go for that. Well, pin up, what do you got here? Oh, here's something wonderful. Wonderful, huh? Mm -hmm. In my arms. What's that? In my arms. Don't you suppose the soldiers would like that? Are you kidding? <laughs> no, really, listen. In my arms, in my arms, ain't I never gonna get a boy in my arms? In, in my arms, in my arms, ain't I never gonna get a bundle of child? Daisy, come here. Come get Crosby on the phone. Come here. Get Crosby on the phone. He'll like this. Okay. I'll sing it to him. Wait a minute. You're going to sing for Bing? Yeah, I'm going to sing for Bing. Okay, okay. Get a girl in my arms tonight. His cousin had sent him a sweater, and his sister wrote a letter. But he wanted something much better, this boy who was sailing away. For his buddies were there with their sweethearts All around him with their sweethearts Now he never had any sweethearts And over and over he'd say In my arms, in my arms Ain't I never gonna get a girl in my arms In my arms, in my arms Ain't I never gonna get a bundle of charms Comes the door, open the door, I'll be gone, I'll be gone. I've just got to have a...
have a honey holding me tight. You can keep your knitting and your purling if I'm a gonna go to Berlin. Give your girl in my arms to knock on the door I'll be gone. And I'll thank you for the many letters you'll write. As for something nice and cute and female, I'll never get it in the female. Give your girl in my arms to knock on the door I'll be gone. I'll be heading for the very thick of the fight. You can wine and dine and cigarette me, but if you want to really get me... Give me a girl in my arms tonight, come the door I'll be gone. Now, does anybody want to please treat me right? You can keep your shaving cream and lotion if I am a going across the ocean. Give me a girl in my arms tonight. What do you say, boys? Let's all sing with a bouncing ball. In cadence, sing. That was swell, fellas, and here's another chorus. Sing. In my arms, in my arms, ain't I never gonna get a girl in my arms? In my arms, in my arms, ain't I never gonna get a bundle of charms? Comes the dawn, I'll be gone. Now does anybody want to please treat me right? You can keep your shaving cream and lotion If I'm gonna cross the ocean Give me a girl in my arms tonight In my arms, in my arms Ain't I never gonna get a girl in my arms In my arms, in my arms Ain't I never gonna get a girl in my arms Come the dawn, I'll be gone all those magazines could not be greater, but I can do my reading later. That pair of socks are going to wear well, but I could use a warmer farewell. I have lots of photographs to pin up, but if you want to keep my chin up... Let me repeat my song of sorrow. I don't know where I'll be tomorrow. Give me love, baby. 